this is the flask application that we are creating as you can see this is the home page and it shows the message you are not logged in please log in to access home page if you click on login you go to the login page let's say i write something random then login it says invalid username or password if i write something that actually exists it will log in and it will say hello omar you are already logged in and then you can log out and if you want to register you can you can register using going to the register link and let's say register user one user one and now we can log in with the user that we just registered with it says hello user one you are already logged in and then you're you can log out again so basically we have a home page we have login functionality we have logout functionality and we have register functionality so let's see how we can achieve this using flask let's create a database that will store our users details and passwords so that we can use that database later for login let's call the database flask users in the database let's create a new table called table underscore users Let's just add two columns for, let's just add four columns. Yeah, that's no matter. Let's call it username, email, and let's call it join date, and password. The type of username is Faircat, that means it will store anything, characters, numbers, or any characters. Let's fix the length for 20. Let email also be where care and let the let be 50 for email. Join date is date and password is also where care. Let's let the length of maximum password be 20. Okay, so we need default values. The default values for username will be none and email will be uh, let's say if the user registers without email, null. Join it can also have default value as null and let password does not have a default value. So the user will have to enter username or password at least and the user cannot cannot or user may not enter email and join it and he will still be able to register he or she will still be able to register also one more thing is we do not have an id here id is very important to recognize a row let's say you can have if you have multiple users with the same username and they will have to be identified by id so let's add one more column let's call it id it will be integer so the primary purpose of adding an id is so that it can identify each row uniquely so if there are 100 user every user will have a unique id all right and click here auto increment that means that if we will not have to insert id it will be automatically increased for each new record added and as you can see here it is automatically set to primary key if we set a row to have auto increment okay now let's save it and we have our database ready as you can see we have five columns id that is primary key and it is also auto increment and we have username that have, can has maximum length of 20 we have email that can have maximum length of 50 and we have join it and password and email and join it have default value of null so if you do not insert anything in email or join it they will be set to null and we don't have to insert anything in id it will be automatically set as it is auto increment and we will have to insert username and password password so first of all we will import all the required dependencies you can see all these dependencies in the requirement.txt file. You can download the whole project from GitHub and there you will find requirements.txt that will contain all these requirements. You will have to install all these requirements using pip command. Now we just initialize our flask app using this function and in your secret key add any key that you want you can add any random key now we will connect to our database so we are setting up the configuration that will help us connect to the database since my database is in localhost i will be setting host as localhost if it is in a server you will need to add server ip here And I'm just using the default root user of XAMPP. So the user is root. 
and I don't have a password so password will also be, will also be empty and the database is the database that we have just created that is flask users so now the configuration for mysql is ready and now we can connect to this database using the mysql module okay so now we have the connection ready and uh, the connection is stored in mysql variable so let's create the route for our home page this app.route slash means that uh, the home page if the this is just the url without any other endpoint this is the def home function will be called so we check if username is in sessions if it is that means that the user is logged in and then we will render the home template and we will pass the username to the template so right now we have not created the home.html I'll show you how it can be created in just a second okay so if the username is in session then we render the home.html template and we pass the username to the template but if the user is not logged in or uh, if the username is not in session then we just render the home template and don't pass the username so as you can check here uh, we are checking if username is present then we are printing the message hello user you are already logged in if the username is not passed on to the html then we just say you are not logged in please log in to access the home page so this is not actually sessions it's just session so remove the pin remove the last s and as you can see here if the user is logged in we are sending the user a session if it is not not logged in we are not sending session now let's run this and see if it works uh, so it's not my sql it's my sql db okay let's run this again okay let's reload the home page and you can see the message it shows you are not logged in okay my bad I need to actually run this flask application we have just initialized it we have not run the flask application so let's run the flask application for now how to run this so we just check if the name is main that means that we are running this application using command line and it is not imported anywhere as a module so if that's the case we just run the application and now let's run this again and this time we will be able to run it properly and you can control click on the link in VS Code to open the page as you can see it shows the home page and if you click on login it shows log page not page not found because we have not actually created the login route so let's create it now let's create a function called login that will handle the login functionality now in a login we first check if the method is get or post because if the it is if the method is guest i'm sorry if the method is get then we will just display the login page but if the method is post it means that data has been sent to us that means a uh, user has sent username and password to us and we will handle that accordingly so if the method is post get the username and password from the request form that is getting that data from front end and now we get cursor from our database using the cursors from our database we can insert data and we can retrieve data but we have to get cursor from our database first so you can just use this line to get cursor and now from the cursor we execute SQL query so right now we will just select username and password from table users where username equals to the, us the username that has been sent from front end So we are using f strings here and this username will be replaced by actual username so we are just getting the last row of the database now in real life this is not how you should do it you should check username and password and password password should be hashed 
But right now, for the sake of this tutorial, let's see how we can do it without hashing the password. So, uh, once the you once we have the row of the user from the database, what we are doing is we are checking if the password equals to the password that the user has sent. That means the password and user are matching, and if it is, we are saving the username in session username variable, and then we are finally re redirecting to the home page. And if the password does not match or if the user is null from the database, then we are just sending it again to the login page. And this time we will also send an error message that prints invalid username or password. And if the method is not post, we will just show the login page. That means user has just requested the login page so we will just render template login.html let's see what we have what do we have in our login.html so basically as you saw if the method was post and we have wrong password or the user was not in database we just print the error message that we were sending from the backend and other than that we just have a form with username and password and as you can see in, in input type submit we have the action login so when the user clicks on this button then it will be redirected to redirected to the login URL and if the method is post as you can see here we are using the data sent from the front front end to select the user from the database now let's run this Okay, so my bad. The route is not fixed. It's the same as the home page. So just let's just add login to the route. The shortcut to run here is F5 in Visual Code, Visual Studio. If you are on PyCharm, it's probably Shift F9. Okay, so now we're in the home page. Let's click on login and let's just type Amar first. Okay, it shows method not allowed. That means our route has not defined method get or post let's check our function yeah as it's clearly invisible here we need to define methods which method will this accept by default it just accepts get so we also need to define that this route accepts both get and post now let's run this again let's log in as you can see this time it shows invalid username or password and another user which is already registered so it is showing successfully logged in now let's click on the logout and as you can see it shows page not found because the logout functionality is not yet implemented so let's implement logout functionality and register functionality so let's create a route for register that will be slash register and let's not do the same mistake that we did before so let's directly add methods while adding code this time so the register will also accept get and post because get will be used whenever the user first opens the register page and when the user clicks on the register button it will be sending data using the post method so register will also accept both let's create a register function again like in login we check if the method is get or post if it is post we need to get data from the form and save it into the database so we will send data in username key from the front end and you'll also get password in the password key from the front end so we now have username and password in back end we just need to save it into the database again we will use cursors from mysql.connection to insert database sorry to insert data and now using cursor we just execute SQL query of insert that is insert into table users insert into column username and password and the values will be the username and password that the front end guy has sent to us
now we just commit and we close the connection so that there are no pending connections and after the register is successful we just redirect to the login page again now this is the post method the post method is done and if the method is uh, get we just render the uh, register template now let's see what we have in our register.html and as you can see here it's pretty basic we just have a form with the username password and the name in the input tab is very important because this is the name that we will be receiving the data in backend as so we will have to use username and password in backend and as you can see here the method is post this is what we are receiving from front end and that is what we are inserting into the table now we also have to make a logout functionality so let's just implement logout route also so it will just be slash logout and it will just be accepting get so we don't need to define methods here and in logout we will not do anything we'll just remove the user from session and then we will render the login page again or do you want to log in home page you can log, you can render whatever you want so we are just removing the username from session and then let's just redirect to our home page let's just redirect to home page instead of login now let's run this and let's check the whole functionality so this is the home page and i'm already logged in so let's log out logout is also implemented let's log in again and as you can see amar is not registered so we can register amar here or amar how do we pronounce it so now it is registered and amar can also log in now so if you have any questions let me know in the comment section below